Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Imper, and I wanted to let everyone know that yesterday, PMDG finally gave a release date for their 777. I only found out when I got a Discord call from my friend Paul telling me that Mr. Rendazzo from PMDG made a forum post about a release date for the 777. I didn't believe him at first because of a previous April Fool's prank. Thanks, dick. But lo and behold, when I checked the forums, there was the post. But enough about that. Let's get into it. I'm not going to read the forum post word for word because we both know how, let's call it, long-winded Mr. Rendazzo can be, but I'll summarize some of the key features they've included in the aircraft that I think are kind of exciting. So getting started here, the anticipated release date from the time of making this video anyway is next week, Tuesday on June 25th, with provisional backup days extending out to the 30th. This is just in case they find something wrong last minute, they'll have time to fix it before we get it. Further down, Robert goes on to talk about the 300ER being the first of several versions of the 777 they will release, including the freighter and the 200ER and LR. So essentially the same development and release plan as we saw with the 737NGs. Nothing new there. After that, Robert talks about the system simulation in the aircraft where he says that their system depth is second to none, and as he puts it, all major and minor systems are simulated to a fanatical level of detail that passes the scrutiny of experienced pilots, engineers, and maintainers. Therefore, I believe we can expect that this plane will have system depth like nothing we've seen in flight sims so far, surpassing Phoenix's A320 and even their own 737 product line. He continues saying that the Universal tablet has been hugely upgraded with many new features included specifically to support this release. It goes on to say that the 777 will come day one with SimBrief integration and a modern SQL-based nav data format provided by Navigraph. This is going to be key for a lot of users. It means that the time it takes for the FMS to import things like your route and weather info into the VNAV pages will be much quicker and more accurate. Pair that with their updated lateral pathing model, and you've got yourself an airplane that will navigate and fly much more accurately than previous products. Continuing from there, we see that all systems are modeled down to the component level, as it computes in real-time temperatures, pressures, fluid flow rates, densities, volts, amps, the kitchen sink, the rearward toilet flow, etc. We'll also see tire wear simulation, much like the AnyBuilds A300, where, over time, there'll be a gradual shift in the performance of the aircraft on takeoff, touchdown, and while taxiing. To me, this hints at an expansion of the maintenance features we saw with the 7.3 and the DC-6, and I'm here for it. This means the plane gradually starts to feel different as you use it throughout its life cycle. And for the last line in this section, it goes on to say that the Boeing electronic checklist is included containing all of the certified normal and non-normal procedures for the airplane. Okay, now this is a big one for me. I found it wonderful that in the 3.7 we could turn on service-based failures. However, finding correct and accurate non-normal checklists online and trying to use them when something goes wrong was enough of a hassle that I never ended up using the failures feature in the 3.7 at all. Having those checklists within the simulation and being able to look at it within the plane to troubleshoot something will enable virtual pilots to play around with this feature and test our ability to remain calm and accurately troubleshoot a system failure like a real pilot would. This is something that has me very excited. Now, winding down towards the end of the post, Robert talks about the attention to detail they put into the engine and fuel burn rate model and its accuracy, which I'm also very excited for because I get tired of landing in every other aircraft with several thousand pounds of fuel more than what was estimated in my flight plan. So it's very nice to see that in their testing, the plane landed within 0.3% of planned fuel burn. Continuing on, they've included Hoppy Network support for data link, Another mention of the failure system, a fully detailed lighting-enabled uh, passenger cabin, hopefully much better than the 37s, and the detail work that went into the exterior modeling, but we already know how much attention they put into the exterior, so unless we see some showcasing of new things, we know what to expect. And finally, at the very end, they mention that they'll announce the price of the airplane prior to release, but I expect somewhere between 60 and 80 US dollars. For those of you that are on Xbox or want to purchase the plane from the in-game marketplace, you can expect release date a few weeks after the standalone release so they can squash bugs and make any necessary stability updates before they send it to a Sobo. So yeah, that's about it for the forum post. I think this release has been very highly anticipated by many, many simmers, myself included, and I think that with the features Robert mentioned above, it was well worth the wait. 
But as with all things in Flight Sim, we shall see when we get our hands on it. Let me know what you think in the comments or join my Discord via the link in the video description and we can talk about it there. Other than that, leave a like on the video and consider hitting the subscribe button as it is free and it helps me out. I stream Flight Sim every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I'm usually joined by a few of my friends and it's always a good time, so come check it out. I hope you all have a good one and I'll see you all next time.